a secondhand coat I want a yacht, not a cheap little boat I tell my daddy not to be depressed All I need for happiness is the best I want a dime and nothing else has a peel And when it comes to men, you know how I feel I want a real man Give me a real man, you know what I mean what I need hey guys hey buddy hey. how are you hello oh, friend a little drunk hello Bevin Hey, what's up? Welcome to Real Men. I'm your host, Tim Steves, and we have an awesome panel assembled for today, so let's meet them right away. Dwayne Hill is in the house. Hey! Hey, Dwayne. Hey, how you doing, guys? Good. How you, how you doing, buddy? Good. Top shelf. <laughs> Any better right between. Anne-Marie Scheffler is also with us today. Nice to see you, Anne-Marie. Nice to see you, too. Thanks for coming in. And uh, JP is here. Jean-Paul. What's going on? Good to see you, man. Tim Reichert popped in. Good to see you, Timmy. Good to see you, sir. And we have a full house today with Teddy Dykstra also on board. Good to see you, Ted. Hey, how's it going? Good, man. That's how we're uh, going to get this episode started with that very same Ted Dykstra with a commentary. Go ahead, Teddy. Stay at home dads. Ah, stay at home dads. Mr. Mom, once an anomaly, now a regular feature on the landscape that is the modern family. Let's be clear about something. Mr. Mom chose to stay at home, okay? It's not because he's a sissy, Nancy, girly boy who'd rather be parading around the kitchen in an apron baking cookies and muffins and cakes and planning theme parties for two-year-olds at Chuck E. Cheese who don't even know what a birthday is. No, it's not also because he's been a failure at everything he's turned his hand at and lost a lot of money and borrowed a lot of money from his in-laws and still owes them. It's not because of that either. And it's not because his wife is more motivated, talented, and makes more money than he ever did or ever will. No, it's because he chose to stay at home, because he loves his children more than anything else. Who dares mock this man, this nurturing wonder? Who dares? Finally, evolution has finished its course, and men can love back. Men have hunted and gathered themselves into a utopian society in which their children not need them not to kill food, but to go out and shop for it. And, and not to protect them from wolves and marauding cannibals, but to protect them from the smell of the diaper genie when it gets too full of poopy pants. Men have been fighting for this since the beginning of mankind. Welcome home, Daddy. Tim? Nice job, Ted. Grab some couch, buddy, and let's get down to this. That's, you've posed some nice questions there. What about it, Anne-Marie Scheffler? When you see a guy middle, midweek, he's got the baby in the middle of the afternoon, what's the first stereotype that jumps to your head? Well, I think it's great. I personally would be very happy if someone would like to, you know, stay at home with my children and be my husband and stay at home. But I have to tell you that the only downfall is that I have gone out with some guys who are stay-at-home dads, and they sit there in the coffee shop with me and their babies, and they complain about their wives. So I don't want that to happen if my husband stays at home. They complain about me. I don't know. Exactly. Well, who are they supposed to, what do you think the women that have the staying home with the babies, who, do, who are they complaining about while they're hanging out with the other women? Their husbands. Yeah. I know, yeah. I know. So the guys just have the worst of both worlds. <laughs> yeah, he's cute for about six months. And yeah. I'm dying don't pick to that. Off. Don't eat it. You're eating it. <laughs> Fine. He gets that from his mother. So, uh, <laughs> think about implants in the future, baby? I'd stay at home, man. I, 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 think, I think it's a cool, uh, cool phenomenon. It, it, it shows a sensitive side, and, and women usually get the, uh, the, the pleasure of bonding with their kids. You're using it as a kids. pickup tool. It's like, hey, no, stay no, at home, seriously. dad. He uses everything women think his sensitivity is sexy. No, yeah. no, dude. You gotta stay, I, remember, that kid's going to be there until you're, tw you're 25. What I'm <laughs> saying is, I, I could care less. It's my kid, man. I, I want to be able to watch my kid grow up. I mean, I spend so much time on the road as a comedian that I miss so many families. Moments that I would love to be at home. They're on to watch film. <laughs> they would have killed him. It's like, it's like, sorry, I was at a party and I did a lot of drugs and I got drunk and these two women slept with me. What did I miss at the family gathering? Your uncle got drunk again, stormed out of the house. <laughs> Your mother's back to the pipe. You know? I, another sensitive handling of the topic by Thank the effervescent you. Dwayne Hill. Thank nice you. job, Dwayner. Oh, I'll wait for that one man show to open at the Winter Garden. Timmy, <laughs> what about it, the man? Would you stay home with the kids? <clears throat> yeah, I can't wait till my wife and I have kids so I can be a stay home dad because right now I'm just a stay home husband and that's not so. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, not so as looked good. upon with the revere and respect that the stay home yeah. dad has. But no, I, I want to have kids, so I, you know, an excuse to keep up on my stories. 
I have to watch my stories, my soaps during the day, you know. Just waiting to die. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 Television. <laughs> <laughs> who, who wouldn't want to stay home with their kids? I mean, Seriously. come on. Yeah. I, I mean, I, so I, I, just I me. consider myself a huge kid itself. Like, I mean, I love cereal, cartoons, you know, and stuff like that. So why not share that with someone who equals that? Kind of, my wife's definitely not going to, you know, she's going to be like, I'm you're a, an idiot. I'm a big kid too, right? So and I, another problem with having another kid to share it with is the fact that they're actually even more selfish than we are. <laughs> well, you know, let's both watch the show. Well, I don't like that show. It's obvious. It's a stupid. Oh, I'm going to smother you with a pillow. So why don't you have kids yet, Dwayne? I, will, I, don't, know. I don't know if I do. You're going to be a great dad. Why don't you have a woman? You're be why, a great dad. But I have to tell you that being a stay-at-home dad in a city is good. But if you're a stay-at-home dad in like a rural place, that can be really tough because it's just you and the kid, and like you don't see anyone for the whole day. <laughs> and you're, like, like, you're, like, all day. you're sitting in a car going. <laughs> Daddy, it hurts my shoulders. Yeah, life's tough. Shoulders, <laughs> But, but, I got nothing. Dad. I got nothing. I don't know why <laughs> you're, you're, they're pointing the camera at me as though I've got, I'm going to so be able to rope we, it all in. We, I got nothing, man. We're talking about child Help slavery. Me, Teddy. Child Help slavery me. Well, here rural on Real Men. Children. Rural children and slavery. So today let's say, for example, Real Ted. Let's, let's say, refocus let's, here. Yeah. Ted, let's, would say you, your, let's say your wife left you. Yeah. You know, I mean, because it's. Probably, probably gonna, gonna happen. happen. Okay. And she left with the kids because let's face it, they're probably, probably more like you too. than her. Yeah. And you know, would you, could you, would you like to have that responsibility for the rest of your life, or would you be like, I'm suing her, you know so what? she has no, to take them two no, weeks? No, I to have you. that responsibility for the rest of my life already. Whether or not she hangs around or not, I have that responsibility. You are and you're a stay-at-home husband. I'd love to stay home with my kids, but I, do, I also want to work. So no, I'm not. I'm nice not going to say. Panel. I'm not going to give up my job and my career. Right. Good job, guys. Nice job, fellas. Another responsible handling of a very sensitive topic. When we come back, we're talking sound systems. Mine's bigger than yours. Does your stereo make you a man? When we come back. What the hell's my... Oh, oh there he is. That's my camera. See, I... Oh, I know. Unbelievable. Welcome back to Real Men. This segment, we're going to talk about mine's bigger than yours. Stereo equipment. What's the deal? Go ahead, Dwayne. We're going to kick it off Dwayne Hill. You know, stereos. Uh, I bought my first major stereo system about five years ago. It was a surround sound system, and it totally, completely rocked. It weighed about 312 pounds, and it sat, it was basically the whole focus of my room was just this, because I invested all my money. It was more than rent was for this stupid amp that now is a paperweight, and I can buy the exact same thing for 70 bucks. That's the problem with investing in a stereo system, is you can spend thousands of dollars, and it's like, oh, you haven't got quadrasync sound? <laughs> How are the 90s? <laughs> Imbecile. But at this phase of my life, I think I'm going to sink some serious coin to a stereo system. We got surround sound now. When you're watching, like, Predator 2, you can hear the next break in behind you. They're killing villagers over there, and it's not even on the screen, and I can hear it. I got something in my eye. But you see, the older you get, the worse your sound system gets, if you're not careful, because you have a couple of kids, and all of a sudden it's like, you have this great sound system. It's a baby monitor. I can hear him swallowing his tongue. We don't want that. We want watts, don't we, people? Right, Tim? <laughs> Sounds good, Dwayne. You've knocked some of the panelists right off the couch. JP couldn't even hold his seat during that. Well, well, let's start with Tim Riker. Timmy, you, you like your electronic toys, don't you, buddy? Yeah, no, I never, I never had the big stereo. I never. It's all about choice. What you want to spend your money on, right? Some guys will spend it on a big stereo system. Another guy will buy a penis pump to make his penis or, actually larger. Or not get a great stereo system and get both. Right. I like dreaming. <laughs> I mean, the balls aren't supposed to fit in it. Because <laughs> dream mission can make be clear mind. about that on the box. Now they're all big. <laughs> Jump Great. in, JP. Jump in, man. What do you think, buddy? I He's can't. Gonna be quiet. I can't jump in. Um, <laughs> uh, after Do you have the big sound system, JP? Um, no, I got an adequate one. Um, I think I think once you can hear adequate? the music, no, no, <laughs> it works. Don't it's sell stereo. It's not how big it is. It's if you know how to use it. You know what I'm saying? It's all about the equalizer. Um, I got a, a pretty good one uh, for for what I. It's a pioneer. How big is the volume knob? Just show me, because that's that's how you tell how good a stereo is. It's like this. Volume knob. Oh, that's a good. Stereo. It's like this. That's a good. Stereo. Yeah, you need it, the giant volume it's knob. The I gotta, house. I got to work out just to turn the volume up. I was like, Ugh, do some push-ups. <laughs> but uh, the the speakers are cool. Um, I got these Mirage speakers. They're 
pretty tall and subwoofer. I, I don't really know much about it. They told me it was good when I bought it, and then <laughs> they snickered as I walked off, you know, that kind of stuff. Did they did they tell we you the sold ladies? the Pioneer with the big knob <laughs> to the big knob. <laughs> but um, I, I, like, I like music. I like music, so I mean, I at least wanted to, to, to sound okay, because I mean, I came from like the, the ghetto days where uh, I had like the one piece, and it had like the equalizer and the speaker and the tape deck all in one shot. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? candle. So, I had one of those. Uh, it was a, I, well, I had a candle. I had costs. I think it was. And one it was speaker. Well. So it was always yeah. like the songs were like in real stereo. It'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, what's yeah, happening guys, over there? I, Jump in, Amory. That's what I think I have now. I mean, like I know nothing about stereo systems and things like that. And and I have to admit that my brother was a big influence musically. Whatever my brother was listening to, that's what I was listening to. And you know, so I, I kind of do leave it in the hands of. Of, of the, the man. man. So you just need a man then to have a good stereo. I That's think all I just you need. Like my, a man dad, too. my dad's a pretty big audiophile, but uh, he was cleared of all the charges on that one. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, tip your weight stuff. The tape deck's but, still uh, sticky. But he, yeah, he's he's into like Luxman and Harman Kardon and and all that kind of stuff. So, oh, the I mean, real the Lexus he's, of yeah, stereo. He's, he's, That's he's, all he's great pretty, stuff. Uh, ever since I, I was a kid, like in the '70s, we had like. Like his music collection, like his vinyl collection, is just absolutely ridiculous. It's probably worth a mint. But now we it's used to really to listen to music, though. Like when I was a kid, we turn on the Who, and we would like do whatever we did to feel good. Who? And and like listen to rock and roll really loud, and listening like, is sit and listen. Kids today, like. They're listening to Jennifer Lopez. Did I would have got just say beat kids up today. Teddy. Kids yeah. today. How Teddy old are you? Dykstra broke I'm out with 40. I can kids say kids today. today. Well, you know what? Kids yeah. today kids are listening today. to these rap. You know and what? I can't stand their loud stereos oh. in their cars going with a boom, boom, boom. Yeah, the boom, Who's boom. definitely not like, crap. They the, definitely the, strike a chord in every loser. The Who is loser. great. The Who is great. <laughs> yeah, so it's fun. Wayne, don't interrupt your father. There is something. What are you kids listening to? We what do you say? You like J Lo? You're gonna pump on her album like really loud? I can loud bebop and... with the best of them. Yeah. 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 Pump on yeah her there's album, something very pump... fun about that. You know, the whole like the car, you know, kind of shaking with the the bass. Are you impressed yeah. by the man with the big boom and stereo in I the guess car? So, a wow. Bit. The yeah. reason that they're you like the stereos, that, the stereos bit, have to yeah. be louder now because the, the louder it gets, the more deaf you get. So it has to be louder it so you can actually just hear it. Pump like just what a kid drives by your house and you can hear it anywhere in the house. The reason you listened to music when you were a kid was because you had to buy an album for twenty dollars. That you only knew one song of because that's all they played on the radio. You had like nine possible dogs. No offense to the Who, but you know we won't get hooed again. Is not every one of their cuts. That's not and really you, what it's called. We won't get hooed again. Whatever. All right. Only they know and you. And they're at home like, Roger, get me my voice box. I'm gonna call those crikey whatnots over there. All right. So there. what are we listening anyway, there to, Dwayne? The key what is that you can download to? music now. You can download music and kids appreciate. All levels of music now. I Onto really believe your that. your tinny sounding computer screen. Yeah, I can download yeah. music and listen. Yeah. Well, I know you, you can take. Maybe you can you. burn your own CDs. Like Dwayne, kids. you've been making fun of the Who. Who do you, what do you like listen to? Listen to? Dwayne? What do you listen yeah, to? Dwayne. What really struck a chord with me? Uh, I like the Who, the third album, the Coke one, and uh, I really like the Acid album. Yeah, I, I Beatles. Ever heard of the Beatles? I like the Beatles. I the love Who the Beatles. is a the Beatles pale, are great. Pale, pale comparison to the right, Beatles. Right, so, so what they are doing is a pale comparison to the Beatles should Speaking just shove off them. Well, I think you're going to make some the 60s. <laughs> the Who? That's all the time we have for this segment. I can't believe you took a big who. dump on the Who and then said the Beatles. Speaking of pale and <laughs> overrated. Who? That's right. Send me your emails. Whoa. We're coming back. We're going to talk dealing with rejection when we come back. Dissing the Beatles. That's right. I dissed the Beatles. Those you were right. in here. Wow. Hey, welcome back to Real Men. Look at this guy go! He's all over the place. Welcome back to the show. With this uh, segment, we're going to talk about dealing with rejection. We got a bunch of comics and actors, obviously. Ted, you must have to have dealt with rejection in your career as well as your personal life, probably, huh? What's like, that supposed to mean? Kick what? Kick well, you're on the show. What are you starting with me for? What did I do? I, I just, I'm, right off the top what? of my head, I'm going to start with Teddy. So you think I've been rejected a lot? Oh, by, because you're a it, theater actor, because, dude? Because I'm a theater actor? Next! <laughs> what do you think, Dwayne? I thought his performance was forced and contrived. It's not coming a mile away, and the punchline made me yawn. Over to you, Jean Paul. The only rejection, uh, I, I really don't know how to do I, I mean, I don't get rejected on a lot of stuff, and plus, I just go into my own little world, and uh, I don't care. It's all about me and their loss and that kind of crap. So. And I like to make myself bleed. <laughs> <laughs> well, David Mamet, David Mamet always says you should wipe your feet leaving the audition, not coming in. Have you tried to do that, JP? Do you try to uh, just leave it there? Or? No, you know what, you know what the, the weird thing is? is I, I'm, I'm so comfortable with who I am that I could really, 
I really don't care what people think. So I mean, it, I, I just do my best, and if, if you know I like it, that's cool enough for me. If I get a call back, I get a call back. My grandmother always said, "What's for you is for you." So I mean, if you don't get it, then it really wasn't for you, man. Yeah, so, yeah. That, 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 the that, train and, is leaving your rather, station. Then, well, let's you talk know. rejection on a more personal level that everybody has to deal with—the kind of rejection we all deal with, Timmy. Uh, yeah, and Marie. <laughs> I didn't. No, I, just women in general, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been a product of rejection my whole life. I think my personality has been molded by the rejections of the past. You want a hug, you know? man? He, he I do. Like you need a hug really or something. Really <laughs> uh, yes, there I you go. There's a oh, oh there. another a hug. Lovely moment. That's like your fifth one from Anne Marie in the last 20 minutes. Right. Off camera, of course. Dwayne's That's not Dwayne. keeping tabs. <laughs> During the break. Not really. I think that. Well, I want to hear from Anne Marie because I, th I think my, my take on rejection, the guys' thing on rejection, is women have taken over uh, so many other things that men used to do, except the rejection part. They're still not asking us out enough. They're still still not putting themselves on the line enough and take it it's still up to men basically to take that big hit and go will you with me I no think so too. <laughs> and guys don't know how to handle it a lot of guys the, the best comeback the line they have is bitch and then, you know <laughs> and that, that's it like we need to come out with a new book of like how to answer the, you know so we either call her a bitch or question her, her sexuality. It. Yeah. <laughs> so suddenly this what's for you is for you. Uh, it changes when it comes to women, doesn't yeah. it, oh, You know, the weird thing is, the I, women I are all I don't, for you. I don't approach women. I, I really don't. No, I saw. I've seen you on the show with the strippers. Uh, you haven't approached them uh, even I was approaching remotely. her breasts. Oh, okay. <laughs> when I said I want to hear from Anne Marie on this topic, I, I even you know what thought she I was like. looking at you, <laughs> I guess. She was a headless torso. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> no, I think... Uh, of fun. <laughs> it's true, men. I do have to do all the asking, I think. But it's... Under the assumption that men like the hunt, right? You know, you don't want a woman going, Would you like to go out with me? Oh, please? Yes, I do. <laughs> You'd like that? Yes, we all do, don't we? Yes, sounds we like, go sounds, sounds like hunt. Sounds like hunt is what we like. Sounds like. <laughs> go easy. <laughs> Hard <laughs> consonant. Oh, <laughs> boy. Yeah, we didn't get it the first four subtle drops. Yeah, Anne Marie, do you deal with rejection from men on any I, level ever? I, I suppose, yeah. I think that uh, you have to, like JP was saying, you know, if there's a guy you're really interested in, and he's really interested in someone else, or he lets you know this that you know you're just friends or whatever. He's not for you, and you just have to understand to let that train leave your station, so the other train can come in. Unfortunately, oh. because he wants to just be friends, that makes him more attractive, That's and right. thereby you phone him. Yeah, well, I'm having sex with somebody. Can I call you tomorrow? <laughs> what, what are you crying for? <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on, she's crying now. Keep going. No, you're doing great. A little bit too much teeth. <laughs> Call me tomorrow, Emery. <laughs> or call me about three. <laughs> John Paul, Emery, call for you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> How do we get back now, Dwayne? I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. We're on a boat on the other side of the ocean. We sit here topic. patiently, letting you take the show <laughs> around. We're talking about the train. And we're back here Ted, dealing with real issues. Center us. Center us, Teddy Ball game. <laughs> center us, baby. Rejection. Anne Marie. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, did you have to. I think, I think rejection. I've never been rejected. rejected. You've never healthy. been rejected by a woman before you got married. Think back. Think way okay, back. Okay, I've Ted. been rejected a couple of times. How did you deal with it, man? I just same way JP does. Just like, well, you know what? That's too bad. It's her loss. And don't forget that the best way to get over a rejection is to find someone else, right? Isn't that better? Like, find and always make better. fun of them. Better, yes, that's right. Always make fun, make fun of them. Of them. That, that, that's uh, I, I find that I, a lot of guys like when they get <laughs> rejected or dumped by their woman, what they'll do is. They will like they'll start working out, and I'll show her because you know, it's stuff that you wouldn't have done while you were in the relationship with her. But all of a sudden, I'm going to the gym, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna be Mr. Olympia, and I'm gonna show you, bitch. I'm gonna show you. And then, you think you guys know. do it different than women? Then the, like they handle it differently? Yeah, if I'm not hiding in the bushes, I'm working out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and Damn, guys are constantly it? like, you know, finding a new girl. I mean, that's like I don't know any guy who's like stopped going out with me and then. Just spent some time alone. No, it's like, okay, you know. Maybe against his will. Thanks. Good job, panel. We got a couple <laughs> minutes left on Real Men. Come back and join us. We're talking <laughs> rejection. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Real Men. We've been talking about rejection, and during the break, Tim Riker did finally share that he has indeed been rejected. Share the story, man. Once. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was in a rock band in high school and probably got the least amount of checks you could possibly get for being in a rock band. What were they called? We were called San Quentin, okay. named after a prison. You know, because 
<laughs> just wondering. <laughs> Tough sound to me. But anyway, so uh, one, I never got any girls, even, even being in the band. So one day I'm on the way home from school on the bus, and this girl sitting in front of me on the bus is wearing a jean jacket with graffiti all over the back of it. People, people used to write on their jean jackets. I'm reading the back of her jacket, and I see, I love Tim Reichert, written on the back of her jacket, right? So I'm like, mm -hmm. and she's a cutie, right? So I tap her on the shoulder, and she turns around, and she just looks at me, and I'm just, like, holding it, like, hello, right? <laughs> and she's just looking at me like, yes, and? And I'm like, I'm Tim Reichert. You love me. You know? And she was just like, I have no way. And I finally had to, well, on the back of your jacket, it kind of says that you love me. And she was like, someone wrote that on my jacket, jerk. Get away. And it was just like, ah, I couldn't have been more set up. I, was, I thought it was so... You love me. It's, it's so right. If you can't bag the girl that says I love Tim Reichert on her wow, on her wow, jacket, like what hope? Story. JP, you no want to share one? JP, there's no way I could top that loser story. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not even gonna try. Except um, you got dumped at a San Quentin concert. <laughs> 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 this next song is it's a girl in a bus. Think you know who you are? Shout <laughs> out to you, gymnasium. <laughs> <laughs> Big shout out to the cab. <laughs> Okay, but rejection. Um, uh, the rejection story I have is uh, it was pretty much my first love, man. And uh, her name was, uh, can I say her name? On yes, TV? please. Yeah. Her name was Gina Crawford. And uh, Gina Crawford, she was like my first big love. And then she left me for this dude who was like supposedly my friend. And then they went off and he was like a rich dude. And, Gina Crawford's a bitch, man. <laughs> that's right, she was. Uh, and yeah, we uh, were okay with legalities until that moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that good was, on the first Gina Crawford, it was all the second good. part. Hey, Gina, but, we uh, love you. Yeah, so she left show. me for this dude and they went out for a long time. And he was a rich boy. And I think that was part of it as well. And then uh, she ended up going to Europe and leaving. And he paid like, like $10,000 for her to go to Europe. And then she left his ass. And. Uh, and so now I feel better. And I'm on TV now. Yay. And you ain't on TV. Uh, <laughs> so. I remember, I remember the first time I got dumped. I was 14 years old. Oh, it was so painful. Damn. And I was going with this 18-year-old guy who was like on the basketball Damn. team and everything. And he dumped me because I wouldn't have sex with him. Because you wanted to have some, or I you wouldn't. wouldn't. Oh. So I've learned my lesson. <laughs> I'm going to tell my 14 year old daughter to put out. <laughs> the secret is, the is so that works? The secret is to only ask out people who you know will say yes. Oh, that's, that's good. Exactly. Do, do some reconnaissance, do some advanced planning, check out with her girlfriends. Will she go out with me? Yeah, she will. Okay, then I'll ask Like someone who has it yeah. written on the back of their jean jacket say, <laughs> I love you. That was just bad luck, man. Yeah, you got to trade. If you wow. ever you see know. that again that's on someone's That's all the time coat. we have on Real Men today. Good job, panel. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Anne-Marie. Good job. Thanks for coming in. Hours, Anne the Real Men, where men get real. We're out. I can read